Hey folks, it's Joe and today on Big Fast Customs I'm going to take a little break from the Model A and I'm going to get you caught up on our 81 Camaro project, so stick around. Alright folks, well truth be told I've been really busy with work lately so uh, I haven't gotten enough time to get enough stuff done on the Model A to make a whole video. So hopefully the next video uh, we'll get the motor back together and uh, get it running. So look forward to that. Uh, but you know, sometimes when uh, there's work to do, Project Car Day has to turn into just another work day. No! God, please, no! No! But in the meantime, I thought I would introduce you to our 81 Camaro project. Um, tell you a little bit about where we're at with it and uh, you know show you some of the footage I've already taken and uh, basically give you an overview of what we're doing with it. Um, I did start the project a little bit before I started filming things for YouTube but you didn't miss much. Basically we took the front clip off in the driveway and we pulled it into the garage and unbolted the subframe and then from there on I've got footage. So uh, why don't we jump into that now and I'll let you know what's going on as we go through it. Okay, so like I mentioned, the subframe's already disconnected here. Uh, we got all the body mounts and the exhaust disconnected, the drive shafts out. We're just trying to get the motor and trans out and the uh, subframe stripped down so we can start building it back up again. Now this car started out as the ultra-powerful Berlinetta model, which was a six-cylinder with the turbo 250 automatic transmission. And uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with a turbo 250, that is the much weaker little brother of the Turbo 350 that everybody knows and likes to use. Um, whoever put the V8 in this car, it's basically a, a 350 out of a truck. Uh, they bolted it right up to that Turbo 250 transmission, added some headers and an intake and a carburetor, and that was about it. Um, when we got it, it, it was okay. I got it tuned up pretty good, and it actually sounded pretty good, but... Uh, it was smoking a little bit, and it just had absolutely no power. So we wanted to get it out of there and get in something a little more powerful to make this car a little more fun. Now, Gidget thought she was going to be funny and sneak a little Zoidberg scuttle into the time lapse, and we wouldn't catch her, but she's busted. So make sure you go down in the comments and say something like, Ha ha, Gidget, we saw you. So with the old drivetrain out of the way, the ultimate plan is we're putting in a 5.3 LS from a... Uh, Chevy Suburban and a 4L80 transmission along with some better gears in the rear end. And for now this motor and trans is going to get packed away. Uh, I doubt we'll use the transmission for anything but uh, we'll see. Uh, I do have a nice set of Vortec heads and a brand new cam that can go on that engine but it really depends on what the short block looks like when I get it torn apart so maybe that'll pop up in another project in the future. But now with the motor and trans out of the way, we can get to stripping down this subframe. Uh, when we got the subframe off the car, it was in really good shape. There was no rust out in the uh, mounting points or anywhere along the frame. It was actually in really, really good condition. So I was really happy for that. Uh, the body, where the uh, body bolts go through, was also in good condition. We didn't have any problems getting any of the bolts out, uh, with the exception of the front passenger side subframe bolt right there by the firewall the uh, little sheet metal bracket that holds the the nut on the other side of the bolt came loose but I was easily able to put the nut back in place bend the cage back down and re-weld it and then we didn't have any more problems but aside from let's say some questionable mechanical and paint work from previous owners the car was just really in good shape there was no no damage, no real big rust anywhere. Uh, so, you know, starting out with a uh, second-gen Camaro project that's not half-rotted into the ground is definitely a good starting point. Gidget is so super excited that we're working on the car, we're getting stuff done, and we're sharing the project with everyone. She's sending a little love out to YouTube world, and I guarantee you she's already dreaming about that first test drive, even though we're only in the teardown stage right now. So now that we've got all the suspension off the frame, all the little brackets and, and everything else, um, the frame's basically ready to go out for sandblasting. 
Uh, we just need to uh, take it out, get that original cross member off of there because we won't be using that. And then the frame can go off to be sandblasted with the control arms. So after sandblasting and two coats of Pour 15 on the sandblasted frame, uh, it's ready to go back under the car and we can get this thing back up and rolling again. So uh, before we bolted it onto the car, we got the uh, new cross member for the 4L80 uh, in place. Uh, it was pretty straightforward. We needed to drill some bigger holes into the frame uh, for the, the bolts that came with the set. But other than that, it was pretty straightforward and it was a lot easier doing it out here before we got it under the car than it would have been after everything was already mounted so once the uh, cross member was in place we got the frame under the car and started lining everything up so we could put the new uh, body mounts in there we've got a uh, urethane body mounts from uh, prothane and uh, you know like I said the the car was in pretty good shape so we didn't really have any any issues with that uh, basically just used the alignment holes in the frame and the body uh, snugged everything up the best we could and then uh, then we got into actually measuring the frame we did a little bit of front to back measuring uh, using the the leaf spring mounts as the uh, the rear measurement point and then we did some uh, cross measuring from front to the opposite side leaf spring and just made sure that everything was square um, you can see we're adding some uh, some measurement points to the very front of the frame and and really we didn't have to adjust much the the alignment holes uh, that go from the subframe into the body really did seem to to put it in the right place but we did double check it triple check it quadruple checked it made sure everything was good and then we tightened the the body bolts down so that uh everything was nice and tight and now the car has a subframe back on it again with the subframe back in place on the car uh, next thing is to get the suspension put back on. So you might remember I said we're sandblasting the control arms. And uh, you can see them down there in the lower right corner, but uh, we wound up not using them. I found some uh, nice, uh, well, cheapy eBay tubular control arms. And uh, they looked the same as basically what most of the vendors were selling. Uh, so I was pretty confident in them when I got them. Uh, the quality looks really good so they were a cheap price uh not super cheap but uh they they look really good and and i think they'll work out really well in the car uh, i also got some cheap coilovers uh which might not work out so well but we'll get into that more later um, but basically we struggled with the lower control arms a little bit but eventually we were able to get them in and everything in place and and then the car was back to being a roller so we could do some other work to it and we've got the car back as a roller so we were able to push it out of the garage to do some of this messy firewall work uh, we did we got the control arms on they're just loosely bolted in place and uh, we got the the stock type brakes back on uh, we did replace the calipers because Brand new calipers were only $30 from AutoZone, so why not, instead of cleaning up the old ones. Um, but yeah, it's back up and rolling, and we can push it in and out of the garage as needed. So uh, Gidget can work on the firewall right now. Um, she's basically taking it down to bare metal, 
all the paint, road grime, and everything off of it. Uh, that way we can uh, smooth out the firewall, clean up all the holes and everything in it so that we can uh, get the vintage air system in it and get it painted up and then prepped for, for the uh, motor to go back in. But uh, you can see it. It actually was cold a little bit in South Carolina on this day. It gets all bundled up. And uh, she learned a valuable lesson that if you're going to be using an angle grinder with a wire wheel on it for any period of time, maybe you probably shouldn't wear some jeans that have holes in the legs. So uh, in a minute here, you're going to see her taking some pictures of her leg with some wire sticking out of it. <laughs> and but the car got done and uh yeah it's ready for the next steps all right folks here's a little little more of a close-up of some of the stuff maybe you couldn't have seen during the uh time lapse but uh basically the frame's all painted now uh we've got a lot of the suspension rebuilt uh brand new tubular control arms uh they're just cheap units off of ebay but they actually look pretty nice uh, I do have coilovers that were also cheapies from eBay. Quite honestly, I'm not real happy with those right now, but we'll see how they turn out after I get the, the weight on the car and, and see how they, they sit. If I need to replace them, I will. But um, basically, the entire frame's done. The uh, All the control arms and stuff, of course, aren't tightened down yet because we got to wait until we get the uh, weight on the car. But, uh, you know, here's the, uh, the important part. This is what's going to happen next. Um, one of the problems we had with the car all this time is all these holes in the firewall the, that were letting in water and air, uh, the heater box was broken and, and half taped back together. So we really only could drive the car in the spring or the fall because it was either too hot or too cold the rest of the time. But with the new vintage air system, all these holes, all these big holes here, this big square hole, these heater, heater hose holes, all that stuff gets plugged up and uh, actually all the hoses come out of uh, this old fresh air intake. So it'll clean it up quite a bit. Um, I'm going to trim out these wrinkles in here. They, they bug me for some reason. I want to smooth that all out. We're basically going to have a, a smooth panel all the way around here, down this way, back across. So when you open the hood, it, it'll be clean in that area. Once all that gets done, uh, then we can actually start on the motor. So uh, hopefully the next video will be trimming off, you know, like this lip on here, flattening out some of these spots, plugging some of these holes and, and smoothing that all off. But, but that's a project for another day. And hopefully you guys are interested in the project and, and want to see more of it. So we'll, we'll start running uh, two projects at a time. Right now we've got the Model A, which I'm hoping to have done around March. It's currently, it'll be February by the time you see this video. And uh, I want the Camaro done uh, by June 1st. So we've got a lot of work ahead of me. Hopefully uh, we can put in the time. Uh, Gidget's been helping out building her car. So <laughs> uh, we're getting a lot of work done and hopefully it won't be too long until this one's back on the road. Hey folks, do me a favor, leave a comment down below. Let me know what part of the Camaro project you're looking forward to seeing. And if you're enjoying the videos, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. That way YouTube knows you enjoyed it. And if they see people enjoy it, they'll recommend it to more people that might enjoy it. And then we'll have more friends on the internet. So thanks for watching. That's gonna wrap up this video. Hopefully in the next video, we'll get this firewall taken care of and then we can start working on that motor. See you guys soon.